If there's one thing that I know you guys, my audience, the on Properteers love, is you love hearing stories from other on Properteers who have gone out and invested themselves in achieving some sort of success, or maybe they've made mistakes and they're not doing so well. You love hearing from real people in the trenches on this journey to create cash flow, to create financial freedom for themselves. And I have a massive treat for you today with this interview with Francis, who is an on property, who's been a customer of mine for about a year. And you'll find out that up until one year ago, Francis and his wife and his family, they just owned their own home. And in the last 12 months, they purchased six properties and they're looking to purchase their seventh. This was such an inspiring story for me because this is someone that was impacted by the work that I do at On Property. And it was just so great to see for me have a positive impact on someone's life that my free content that my paid content was able to impact someone's life so here we have the interview with francis i'll head over to it now and i'll come back at the end to summarize and to give my thoughts hey guys ryan here from onproperty.com.au helping you find positive cash flow property and today we have a very exciting episode an investor profile with francis nethercott who is a investor himself and listener and audience member of On Property and a customer of mine. Francis, thank you so much for taking the time out today. Sure, that's, that's a pleasure. Uh, I'm a bit camera shy just to let you know. Uh, it's an honor for me to be invited by you, Ryan. Thank, again, thank you very much. Thank well, you very much. it's an honor for me to <laughs> interview you. You've been a part of you know my community for some time, so it's great to sit down and chat to you. Why don't you tell... Uh, the people out there, a little bit about yourself and then give them an idea of what your portfolio is. Sure. Um, Well, well, I'm Francis. Um, I work as a registered nurse. Um, I'm still working. Um, I'm still on the rat race, unfortunately. But uh, I started the journey uh, last year, if I recall, around May. because at the, in my situation, I'm actually turning 46 this year. Um, I have a lovely wife. She's a registered nurse too, and we have four kids. And, four kids, uh, wow, that's insane. I've got three, and we're like, I cannot have any more. That's it, we're done. <laughs> I don't know how you do four, man. I don't know. Um, and yeah. you're both working, that's insane. <laughs> we're, we're bo- yeah, we're both working right now. Um, it's just a situation, it's the... the it's getting tough. Uh, like uh, the expenses, uh, I couldn't save at all. Um, my ki- like my twins, we have we have twins, and they started school this year, and it's getting rough. So um, I have to do a plan. Um, and I read a certain book, and it just motivates me to if these people can do it, uh, maybe I can do it. You know, I mean, I got nothing to lose, and. I started to start a journey to look for ways and I found property investing. But So what book, I, what book did you read that motivated you? Which book? Yeah. Or, oh, Robert Kiyosaki. <laughs> Rich, was it Rich Dad, Poor Dad? Well, yes, that's right. Yeah. That's right. So it motivates me and it has to be a way uh, – to, to help me financially. So what I did, um, um, I look at the webpage and uh, thank God I found your webpage. Um, <laughs> and it helped me to tell you honestly, um, three of the properties that I purchased is from your webpage actually. Oh wow, so it, cool. Yeah, yeah, that's right. So uh, how I did it, um, I, I have a, I have a team with me. Uh, what I meant is I add advice. I mean, um, I can't do it alone. I mean, I have to um, meet up with people who have done it before. So uh, actually, uh, Ryan, you're one of the the people that helped me through your web page and um, getting all the, the, the positive cash flow uh, yeah. with the, so it helped me in a way. Um, I made a strategic plan how to do it. Um, like in my situation, I'm negative. Uh, first thing I did was to budget uh, all my expenses. Me and my wife has to write down uh, how much we earn and how much money goes out uh, from our pay. 
Um, and then your web page helped me in a way because it's a positive cash flow. So it's giving us extra money going coming back to our pocket. So we purchase um, two positive cash flow to buy two capital properties. So that's how we end up building our uh, portfolio. Okay, so do you own four properties at the moment? It's crazy. I had six now. <laughs> you got six. Okay, wow. So are you telling me that a year ago you were basically had very little savings and no yeah. properties and now you've got six properties? Actually, correction. Um, we bought a prop- our first property in Pendle Hill was uh, 2005. Okay, and- is that your house? Yes, yeah. yes, that's the uh, main main house. But okay. uh, but actually, what I thought the first property is an asset, but it's actually it's not because it, I'm paying the council rate, the electricity, the telephone uh, repairs, and ins- insurance, and so on and so on. So the money is going out. But um, somebody told me that um, you have uh, dead money in in your house, so that is uh, some sort of they call it equity yeah. but um i was with this another bank they said to me look after your first purchase come back in three years so i went back and they declined us come back in five years so i came back on the same bank uh, bank and then i got declined after 10 years i went back i still got declined it has to be some way so i did my research and then i found out because i have a lot of credit card debt So that's now I understand why the bank is not lending me money to buy property because of that credit card. So what I did, I have to find a way to get rid of that credit card. I still do credit card, but I don't, I'm not a fan of credit card. Um, I mean, we have our own different opinion about credit card. So what I did, I became full on budgeting. Uh, so once I clear up my credit, uh, fix up my credit rating, then the bank are starting offering me, would you like, would you like to lend, uh, to have this money for a loan and et cetera, et cetera. Yeah. And then that's how I devise a plan, how, uh, to build up my portfolio. Um, um, actually right now I'm looking for number seven, but, uh, awesome. yeah, I know it's crazy, but, um, yeah. So actually my first investment, uh, I went to uh, Gold Coast, but it didn't turn out well. Um, I was planning to quit. I, I was telling myself I shouldn't, um, I should have done this at all, blah, blah, blah. But as I go on, um, somebody told me, uh, you learn from mistakes. And I, I did a lot of mistakes from my journey at the moment, but uh, I learned from it. Um, it's not like, I did a mistake. I'll do it again. Um, you learn from it, so it's it kind of motivates me in a way. Um, right now, I mean, I still live in the same house eleven years ago. I don't have a mansion and all that stuff, but um, in paper it says I have this X amount of money. But um, I'm still focused. I'm planning to get uh, hopefully like ten or twelve properties i'm not saying I'm, i want to be greedy and all that jazz i mean it's just i want to my goal is to have financial freedom so yeah. like what i do i write down the goal like in three months six months 12 months five years that co- that kind of stuff so um i know it's hard uh but uh, i have to stick in the plan um it's a slow process i know uh even i thinking uh, like Last May, we started the investment property. We bought five properties in less than seven months. Um, I don't know how we do it, but to tell you, well, honestly, let's talk like let's talk about that because that's something people would be super interested in. Is okay, you you go from this person who owns their own house back in two thousand and five. Yeah. So this is it's been ten years since you purchased your house. You've paid off. You had credit card debt issues, but you've managed to pay them off. It's now May and you're deciding, okay, I'm going to go invest in property. Was May when you purchased that Gold Coast property that didn't work out for you? Yes, that's right. Um, So what what was it like to go through that first property? Like when you're, okay, you decide I am going to invest in property now. What sort of steps did you take towards getting you towards buying that first property on the Gold Coast? Okay. Um, uh, what I did, I was doing the maths. I was doing the numbers. Um, what I noticed with property investing is all about numbers. Um, 
it has to stick with the budget. I mean, look, at uh, that time, I remember the bank was offering us $700,000. $700, but it doesn't mean I'm going to use that all. It has to stick on a certain plan. Uh, there's a saying, uh, bite that you can swallow, you know. I mean, yeah. you know what I mean? You heard about that kind of stuff. So when we bought that prop, uh, we we're, were about to purchase that that property. Um of course, we did some, uh, what do you call this, uh, building and pest inspection, but the building and pest is, uh, is very poor. So if we go ahead, we're going to spend X amount of money. So we decided to pull out because the real estate is not being honest with us. So it's a bit sad. So um, at that time, I, I was planning to uh, to pull. Uh, I, I pulled out, and I was telling myself I should have done this. I should have um, get into property and all okay, that. Okay, so you didn't actually purchase the property on the Gold Coast. No, we didn't. We didn't. Did you lose a lot of money on that deal? Or is it actually, actually, I lost the de- uh, not the deposit, the the building is uh, uh, building inspection and the no. uh, the, uh, the termite. Uh, the pest inspection. Yeah, but so I got my, kind of like a thousand dollars or something. Yeah, but uh, I got my deposit back, thank, thankfully, because l- luckily I uh, we put a I put a clause on it on the email, like depending on the um, the the report or depending on the uh, the pest inspection. But if I didn't do that, there's a chance I'm gonna lose my um, deposit. So, but I went to depression for probably three weeks you know i was upset you know yeah but you know um somebody told me look uh it's not the end of the world probably that probably is not for you you have to move on and then that's a learning curve for me uh and it it motivates me because before i start this journey i have i wrote down what is my goal it's not because i want to be rich or i want to have this property portfolio it's the goal that to be financially free um especially i'm thinking about my 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 kids, um, you know, like I was saying, I'm actually last year I was actually negative thirty grand, <coughs> like because of the credit cards and the expenses, and I yeah. have to find a way to make a money. Yeah, kids are uh, expensive, man. My daughter's <laughs> like gluten and dairy free, and like nine dollars <laughs> for a loaf of bread for her if we want to get it. Like kids cost yes. money; they're <laughs> they're not cheap. They are. They are. They are. So so what I did, I um. I remember last year I was I had three jobs just to sustain. Right. Now I only have one job now, so <laughs> that's cool. Okay. This is helping me. Wow. Uh, so yeah, yeah you're definitely a hard worker. So you go from the Gold Coast property, which falls through. You get your deposit back, luckily. You're out a bit of money for your building and pest inspection, but you haven't lost tens of thousands of dollars, which is that's good. Right. Um, so then, what was the next property, and did you end up purchasing that one? Okay. Um, the next property, I went. Uh, I went to Brisbane. Um, do I do I need to tell which suburb? Or? You don't have to if you don't want to. It's fine. Oh yeah. Okay. Um, I, I went to a place in um, in Brisbane called Logan Lee. Uh, I'm not telling everyone to go there and purchase it straight away. I mean, as I said before, it depends on your strategy it depends on your uh, what budget um, that you can afford so um, what I do uh, I don't um, I listen to advice I mean I listen to some people all buy here buy there and all that but I I, one of my what of my one of my tools that I use is I use an RP data or I do a research due diligence I use the uh, Australian statistics. I ring up council. You know what is it like there? Uh, is the place uh, flood prone and or the uh, or the crime and all that jazz? What's the growth in in a year or two or three times? So, and then I I, I devise if it's a passive cash flow or it's a growth or both. Probably both. That would be great. So, um, I bought a property uh, in Loganly. Uh, and it's uh, it's actually two in one. So for me, it's it's a positive and a and, and a growth as well. Uh, when I did my calculation, it's actually n- uh, negative, but uh, it depends on the deposit as well. So um, I put forty percent deposit. I know it's a big chunk of money, um, but at the moment, I'm getting 
positive cash flow from it as well. So yeah. it helps me uh, with my financial and also helps me for the next purchase as well. Yeah. Awesome. And so, yeah, that positive cash flow helps to, I guess, fund you so you don't have to work three jobs. You can just work one. Yeah. And so you that's can move on to the next one as well. And I think like that's something a lot of people do get trapped in is like that negative gearing cycle where they want the growth, but yep. they invest in negative gearing and it's costing them money and that's right. they run out of money. And then like either for you or me or something like that, where we've got kids, if for some reason you lost your job or lost your source of income and you had negative geared properties, it trouble. could be really bad. So obviously can, if everything goes perfectly, that can be a great strategy. But uh, I think especially when we have children, we kind of need to prepare for the worst, don't we? That's right. So, um, so, so the, as I said, can I just ask the 40% was that savings or is that, did you draw equity from your home? Well, um, both because, uh, uh, I did something silly. I mean, I'm not saying to everyone to follow what I did, but, um, I haven't went, I haven't been to vacation for the last eight years. And so I have a bit of savings plus I add up some of the equity. Yep. So that's, that becomes the 40%. I know it's a big chunk of money, but uh, as I said before, it's a strategic plan for me and uh, my my family. So we think about, um, look, it's a big money. We do it, but we get this X amount of money coming back to our pocket and, and it will help us for our uh, whatever expenses or for the next project. Yeah. Actually, we draw up some equity from that property and we bought another. And then, uh, you, and then you went again. So how do you... Again. Do the jump from like you purchased your first investment property. You said you got five in seven months. How far was it between <laughs> that first one in Logan Lee and the second one? Yeah. Okay. So after the Logan Lee, um, helped you uh, think for your website. Um, I saw a property in Mildura because your website uh, it's uh, positive cash flow properties and cash flow properties are king. So with the, um, the one in Mildura, it helps me. Again, uh, the growth is not that great at the moment, but it's giving me uh, X amount of money, uh, yeah. good money. So with that, um, with the cash, positive cash flow, if I decided to go for the next purchase, the bank sees it as, wow, this is good because you're getting extra income back. Um, what I learn if, let's say, if I have like two, three negative properties, it's hard for me to move forward. It's hard for me for the bank to get my bank approval for a loan. Yeah. Um, you know what I'm saying? So yeah. um, if the bank sees it as you having another, uh, some sort of income somewhere, it, it, you don't become, I don't become like a risk to them. So then they will, again, the, the borrowing power uh, increases and and the borrowing potential become easier. Uh, yeah. For and them. so, how did you go with purchasing? So, you live in Sydney, and you've now your first two properties you've actually purchased interstate. So, you purchased one up in yep. Brisbane, and you've now purchased one down in Victoria. How yep. did you go about? Did you fly out and view these properties? Did you purchase yes. them sight unseen? Uh, yeah. How did you go about that? Well, that's one of the plan. Um, uh, because I noticed from the first failed, um, well, the first property that I was supposed to buy, uh, I didn't look at it. I just look at the internet, all yeah. that jet. So when is everything school? Yeah, you know, we're going to buy it. No, it's okay. Internet is all right. But um, it's it's better that you look at firsthand. Uh, it's better that you can go in and feel like, uh, what is it like being in that property? Um my mindset now, if I purchase a property, I have to think about me as a, as a tenant and how would I live in that property. Uh, I have to think about uh, the mind of a, of a tenant um, before purchasing the property. And if all the, uh, the, um, all the boxes are tick, then I'll go for the purchase. Um, and so with, with your trips to like Brisbane and down to Victoria to Mildura, did you go with like one property in mind and you're like, I'm interested in this property, I'm going to view this property? Or did you go down and say, I'm interested in investing in this area and then call all the real estate agents in town and spend a day or two just seeing everything in the area? What was your approach? Yeah, that's what I did. Yeah. Uh, I'm already down there. Might as well have a look at the what is the what's in the market. Uh and I 
um, I go to different uh, real estate agent. I ring them up. Uh, look, um, I just want to have a look uh, if you can show me around, blah, blah, blah. And yeah, uh, they're very accommodating. Um, so yeah, um, I don't know. Some people, they can look at online, but uh, probably I'm a bit traditional, better to look uh, at the place. I'm already there. Uh, I end up probably looking at about eight to 10 properties and of course, with those properties, I have to, before I go there, I should have that in mind, what sort of properties are about to visit. Yeah. Uh, I have to know the uh, the statistics, what sort of house is there, is that an old property, or old house, or is it like a, a turn and key package and all that stuff. So I have to look at the pros and cons, I even look at um, the potential, like in the future, if, if it's a big land, the potential that I can probably renovate it or to or subdivide uh, or something. Subdivide it, thank you. Yeah. So yeah, that kind of stuff. So um, I have to think ahead. Um, so before before uh, flying flying to Mildura as well. Yeah, uh, I think a question people will probably be asking at this point: a guy who has four children, three jobs. <laughs> <laughs> How do you find the time to do all this research to go out to these areas and to look at it? Yeah. How did I do it? Um, I remember with the bo- uh, reading the book of Rich Dad, Poor Dad, one of the uh, advice that he, he, was, he wrote in the book is you have to work for free. So to do it like during my uh, days off or uh, before I go to work or after work, I do a research uh uh, now we live in an information age. You just look at the internet, Google, and then it says it all. But still, you know, you don't. I don't really trust it 100%. Um, I still have to get some second opinion or third opinion, or whatever that may be, um, to do a, a thorough search, like a due diligence. What they what the investors call call it. So that's how I do it. And having a mindset of. Uh, like I need to uh, do it in a specific time. As I said before, let's say like now, I'm giving myself two to three months to to purchase another property. If I don't get it, then probably I need a kick in the backside. And uh, <laughs> 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 like having a plan and strategy, like the will, you know, you have to be focused. Uh, that, I don't know how I did it. Uh, sometimes uh, me and my wife will think about it. Uh, uh, Francis, how did you do it? I said, I don't know. I think it's just that motivation. You just had the determination uh, and you just made it happen. And yeah, it's just like a self-discipline. Like, um, how do I say it? Before I get into this uh, journey, uh, I'm a part-time musician. And every time on my days off, uh, I buy stuff that, you know, like a new guitar or a new keyboard and all that stuff. And yeah. now it's completely different. It's just the the goal that I have to uh, focus on. It's like, um, how do I explain it? Like if I drive from Sydney to Brisbane, I have to focus the highway, the Pacific Highway to get up there. I'm not going to go to, uh, probably I can go to, uh, what's that, New, New England Highway. But that's another way to do it. But the focus is a bit like, mm, you know, you yeah. have to, you know what I'm trying to say. Yeah. So kind of you mindset. need to be focused on where you're going and to stay focused on that and use your time to stay focused on that okay. rather than, because if you get distracted or if you just decide to go in a different direction, like you're not going to end up where you want. So I think Definitely. you're one of those people who you, you set the plan, you set your goal, you said, here's where I want to achieve. Here's what I want to get to. Here's how I'm planning on getting there. And you stayed focused on that journey and made That's- the time for it. That's right. That's right. Um, wh- how I did it, uh, I remember uh, maybe I was crying for probably three, four, four days. Uh, <laughs> I have to do some sacrifice. Uh, as I said before, I was a part-time musician. I started playing music when I was six, five, six years old. And um, if I play in RSL or play music in RSL, I make about 200, 250 uh, a night. Uh, but I sacrifice that in a way. Uh, I don't play music anymore. Probably I, I could still can, but it's just like because that income is already being um, from. Uh, I'm getting that same income from the uh, passive income. Yes. Yeah. So 
so I can spend more time with my with my, my with my kids, and you know, I can do something else that I really want. So, but it's, I'm not saying I'm still um, just staying at home and doing nothing. Uh, I'm still working, uh, and uh, I'm still in that goal. Uh, my goal is hopefully to retire in five minimum five years maximum yeah. ten. But I have to stick on that. Um, Actually, my wife has a different mindset before this. Um, she's a different kind of mindset that if uh, if I got paid from work, I should have spent it. I should have reward myself. Yeah. And I'm explaining to her, look, uh, we can do all that. We can have the enjoyment as this rich people does, but we have to be focused of the goal, you know. But if we don't, we're going to probably instead of five, 10 years, we're going to end up probably doing it in 15, 20 years. So if we can focus in and out, the faster we can get into that goal, the more we become financially free. Yeah. Awesome. So the first two properties you said you purchased were positive cash flow properties, but then you yep. said you purchased two growth properties after that. Were they negatively geared? And how did you go about searching for growth properties as opposed to positive cash flow properties? Like what's different? Oh, uh, Good question. Because, uh, okay, my strategy was I go positive and then another positive and then I go growth and then positive, then growth. You know, it's like yeah, so uh, alternate. And uh, yeah, a lot of people do do this because they get the positive cash flow and then they buy a growth property, which may be negatively geared, but they kind of counteract each other. So you're not in a negative position. You're kind of neutral in terms of yeah, cash flow. That's right. That's right. So at the moment, I'm a, I'm a little bit positive so altogether with the property that i have it's actually paying itself great because let's say i give example like uh for our viewers as well for your viewers sorry um let's say i have this property at uh i have this property at uh, morey field in queensland it's a negative at the moment it's negative uh negative gear so the property that i got from mildura the, the excess money is paying, it's adding for that mortgage yeah. because a tenant in, in Morrowfield, it's paying the rent, but the the mortgage is not enough. It's short. So instead pulling from my pocket, this other property is paying for it. Yeah. So so only thing I'm focused in, um, the money I make from work, I'm paying that for my mortgage here in Pendle Hill in Sydney. So basically, the, the the five properties, the five investment properties are paying by itself. Yeah. So now you're kind of in a situation where you've got, so like your own livelihood, you and your wife work, you pay for your own house, you pay for your four children and all of your life and stuff like that. And then your properties are kind of like their own separate sort of, I guess, business or entity. And they're kind right. of... The ones that are positive cash flow are paying for the negatively geared ones and they're kind of, you know, growing themselves and then I'm guessing you're drawing equity out of them as well to reinvest. And so yes. you're kind of you're living your life, you're working to pay for yourself, and then you're building up this property portfolio. It's kind right. of like I think it sounds like you're treating it a lot like a business and yeah, building up that business. True. Actually, it's you're absolutely correct, Ryan. Um, the property that the portfolio we're building is actually a business. So uh, uh, there's a pros and cons. So uh, um, at the moment, uh, we're, we're May now, right? Yeah. Sorry. <laughs> oh yeah. no, April. Sorry. April. So it's been less than a year. <laughs> You've yeah, already got <laughs> six properties. I know. So we're. I'm hoping I'm. I'm gonna get a big tax return coming back. So um, that's the uh, advantage of the the negative gear. Uh, but uh, the positive cash flow is king. So it's it's balancing. It's like a balancing act. So in a way, it's good. So um, all I have to do is focus on the main uh, main property and. Uh, it's hard in a way because uh, I get called from agents that, you know, bit this repair and all that. But, you know, um, getting into where my situation is, I need to have a certain point of buffer. Yeah. So uh, for, let's say, for one property, I give myself at least 10 grand buffer. You know, let's say if the tenant walk away or something happened, you know, I still have that extra money to cover that mortgage in x amount of time x amount of 
uh, days if something happens, some repairs and all that. So I have something money uh, to uh, to call, uh, to pull out and pay for that bill. So what I'm saying is, before I bought the property, uh, I know probably some uh, friends out there thinking, let's say the price is 200 Gs. It does. You don't have to think it's 200 Gs. You have to think more than that because you have to pay for the uh, the uh, the building, uh, the pest inspection. People forget about that. Is the settlement? You know, after yeah. the settlement, you pay another X amount of money. Uh, people might say, "Oh, I don't want to do uh, hire a property manager and all that." Well. There's a pros and cons to that, in in my opinion, but in my case, I I hire a property manager because they're they're the one with all the respect with property managers. I love them all. They're the ones getting the headache. Yeah, calls from the tenants and all that. They're like the you know, people in between. I mean, I know you we, we we I have to pay x amount of money to them, but it's just the the freedom the uh free from headache uh and how to deal and they're the ones dealing with the with the tenants so well that's the and the same as you were saying you know i could spend my time being a musician at night at the rsl and earn 250 dollars or i could spend that time growing my property portfolio in the same way you could spend your time and maybe save a couple of hundred dollars by not hiring an agent but that's- you could spend that time to buy another property which is going to generate positive cash flow which is going to pay for the agent excellent you know? So I got, that's right. So, uh, uh, well, my personal advice to our uh, to your viewers is, um, if they're gonna go into that journey, uh, property investment, um, I believe it's hard at first, but as you build up your portfolio, it becomes uh, easier and easier. Look, I, I still make mistakes. I'm still growing. I'm still learning. Uh, um, but uh, it's just having that mindset. Uh, you have to really concentrate on the goal. Um, going back again with that settlement, let's say uh, property is 200 Gs. You have to think that you probably spend another, you have to have at least 20, 30 grand extra because just in case something happened, let's say you the, the property is transferred to your name. If uh, this this is... Uh, I'm talking about my personal experience because um, the agent was saying, Francis, we have to spend 10 grand. We have to change the carpet, this, this and that. And if I don't have that money, um, it's going to it's gonna be hard to put the property on the market for rent. Yeah. So and especially it's it's really competitive out there. So you have to be uh, if if the property manager said, look, we need to repaint, change carpet and all that. So um I have to comply because they are the expert. They they know the area more than I am. Like for example, like in Mildura, for instance, I I'm not from Mildura. I when I flew up there, uh, that was the first time that I've been there. I don't know anything uh, about that area, but the uh, real estate. I mean, we have our own you know opinion about real estate agents, but you know the property manager and all that. They know the people that uh, they have connections with the builders with the with the repair people, the plumbing, etc. So yeah. that's what I do. So growing, a lot of people contact me and they get stuck. So they buy like two or three properties or something like that and they hit their lending limit, especially with the new rules that came in from APRA to try and restrict investor lending and stuff like that. Have you found yourself getting stuck and not being able to borrow more money to go again? Or how have you gotten around that so you can continue to grow and you're now going on to property number seven? Uh, that's a very good question. <laughs> well, at the moment, I haven't get stuck yet uh, because the property I buy, uh, I don't buy properties that it's, uh, at the moment, I haven't bought more than 400K property. Uh, I think it depends. Uh, what I know is if you can prove to the bank that you're able to pay this and they don't see any risk at all from from your financial point of view, then I think it should be okay. Um, and do you just use the one bank or do you have a mortgage broker that you work with? Good question. Very good question. Um, actually, I have brokers, not okay. one. So uh, I have three brokers. Uh, so um, if this broker tells me this, 
I have to get a second opinion. Uh, with all due respect, uh, uh, I love my brokers. Uh, some of them, they get upset because they found out I go to another broker, but it's, it's all about business, you know. So uh, what was what was your reasoning behind choosing three or going with three brokers over the usual, you know, usually people just have one broker, they go to that broker, they trust that broker. What made you say, okay, well, I'm actually going to get three people that I work with? Okay, um, the reason I do that, because um, uh, my background is a nurse, um, I have some patients, they get upset because their doctor says this, this and that for their the their health. I tell them, look, uh, why don't you get a second opinion? Uh, probably, the, the, I'm not saying the doctor is wrong, but, you know, try to get another advice. So my mindset is like that. So if I go to a broker, broker said this and that, I'm not saying I don't believe him or uh, but I'll try for another second advice and, and I'll see on my budget because um, some brokers or some lenders will say, we'll lend you this money, uh, let's say half a million dollars. And then with this, let's say, uh, interest rate of 4.7. Uh, me, I have to stick with the budget. If my numbers doesn't stick to that, I can't. Because if, if I go to it, by the end of the day, as months or probably years, I'm going to be in trouble. Um, I will be financially, you know what I mean. Yeah. Uh, Right. So that's that's how I that's how I do it. Um, so I ask for certain advice. What do you think? Is this interest rate uh, good for me and all that? Uh, can we, you know what I mean? Yeah. So that's how I do it um, with the bank as well. Uh, the bank, let's say, uh, ask your question, how many banks I have? I have five different banks, you know. Yeah. Uh, the reason for that, I mean, we have... Uh, but we have different opinions. Uh, okay, let's say my mortgage in, uh, let's say in Logan Lee. Uh, okay, uh, okay. Let's well, a say lot of people, a lot of people invest using different banks so that their properties aren't cross collateralized and mixed together. That's, so if something right. happens to one property, or say, God forbid, a loan gets called on one property, it's very hard for the bank to then go to another bank and say, we want the money from that loan, you know, or right. we want you to sell that property and that, cause that, that second lender will say, well, no, go away. Whereas if you have all your properties with one bank and they say, well, we need some money, you've got five properties with us. Let's force you to sell a couple of them. So it's just right. kind of. Right. That's correct. Like, like for instance, I just want to add one, one more thing. Let's say, uh, uh, something happened to me. I become sick or I had an accident of some sort. And um, the, if I have all properties in one bank, they, they will or they will see it as a risk. They might ask me, uh, as you said, or oh, uh, Francis, uh, with all these um, properties you have, we're giving you three, four months to pay it all off. Then I'll be stuffed. So what I did, I just spread the risk. So if something happened to me. Let's say a property in Logan Lee said, "Look, uh, Francis, we have to sell this property." Blah blah blah. So at least I lose one instead of losing it all. Yeah, totally. Yeah, and it also gives yeah, it gives you more control as well. They're not forcing you to sell particular ones or your house or something like that. that so, yeah, a yes. lot of a lot of investors do that, and so people should obviously talk to their mortgage brokers um, about what's best for them. Don't take our advice. <laughs> <laughs> Just put that disclaimer out there. How do you go? Last question, and then I'll let you go. Thanks so much for your time. No, With you. six properties, soon to be seven, five different banks. How do you go about m managing all of these like cash flow in, expenses out across all of these different loans and bank accounts and things like that? How can you keep on top of that and manage <laughs> that? All right. Um, actually, to tell you the truth, it's getting hard. I mean, uh, I, I have a friend who is actually uh, an accountant. So... Uh, I, 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 as I said before, I do a budgeting, a uh, budget of all the expense, all the income, and I send, I send her all my, uh, uh, my expense. And because if my wife said, oh, Francis, we're spending this and that, I mean, I can, I can, I can try to calm her down, compare to my friend. She can, she can just kick me on the backside, Francis, you know, you, you know, you're not doing well and all that. So I know it's, uh, 
well, it's just one of my strategy. It's just someone has to nag me on, on, on behind that I can't answer back, you know. Yeah. It's like being from the outside, you know, this is what you do. Uh, you have expense here, put it down, you know, this and that. Oh, you have a, you have a surplus. What do you want to do with it? You know, put it aside and then, you know. Someone so you, has have, to- you have an accountant that you hire that helps you to keep track of it. They will... Do they do they manage your bank accounts or do they just look at the expenses and then tell you you need to pay this expense now? Well, yes, that's right. Yeah, <laughs> but I still also look at it as well as my expense. What I do, I have a I have a big uh, calendar um, in in our office. Uh, well, I, I just we have a spare room. I convert into the office, and when the bills comes in, I write it down bills due at a certain date and all that and i budget again i mean um yeah every day i do this uh it's it's like a normal uh lifestyle for me that it's a must that has to do because i have to keep an eye on uh my expense and budgeting i remember uh last year if i have a bank statement um i just mm, yeah put it on the side now i know the numbers by heart so (laughs) Yeah, well, that's the thing. When you're only dealing with one bank statement or one credit card that you only need to pay once a month, it's easy to just get the mail and ignore it. And you're like, yeah, I'll deal with it when it comes around. But I can see when you're dealing with a lot of different properties, a lot of different banks, you got to be on top of it. And then to have, I guess, someone on your team who can nag you as a backup is definitely like I do that in my business. Like, I have a personal assistant and I do a lot of things myself. But when I forget, she's there to say, hey, Ryan. You need to do this. You like That's go ahead it. and do this. So it sounds like the same sort of thing with your accountant. That's right. That's it. That's how I do it too. Yeah. Well, um, thanks so much for your time today and for sharing your story and your knowledge. It's so inspiring, and I think people are going to be so inspired to hear that. Thank you, know, you. Here's someone that yes, they owned their own house. They bought that ten years ago, but you know, twelve months ago, you owned one property. You owned your house, and now yes. twelve months later, you own an extra five or six properties, you're in a positive cash flow position, you've got some growth properties in there and you're set up to hopefully retire within the next, you know, five to 10 years. I think people are going to be yeah. very inspired. Thank what, you. <laughs> what advice or what words of wisdom would you want to leave people with today as they wow. go out? Maybe they're off to work. Maybe they're doing a night shift <laughs> at nursing. Maybe they're on the train. Yeah. What yeah. words of wisdom should we leave with them? Uh, uh... Uh, I don't know how to say, it, but as I said before, uh, you stick. Uh, you write down what do you want to do in in uh, in life, like financial freedom. You have to able to know what is a lo- uh, asset and liability. Uh, think about uh, the future. If you're single, uh, uh, planning to have a family, think about uh, the future for your future kids. You know, if you have family uh, kids like me and Ryan, think about what you can pass it on to your kids and you know um nowadays we live in um information world uh world uh, um nowadays if you can see the expenses going out the value of uh dollars is going down we have to think of a way how to be financial free because um i seen some people sadly including my mom uh uh, i love her dearly but she's just you know living in in $350 a week. I mean, that's like, like what, $15,000, $18,000 a year. I mean, I don't want to be like her. I love her dearly. dearly. Um, sadly, she doesn't want to uh, accept uh, financial uh, help from me. I will, look, I, I uh, respect her uh, opinion. But look, if she, all she needs to do is just say, give it the world and I will, I will happily help her financially but i don't want to be on that kind of situation a lot of people that i know is into that getting into that situation i mean all of you out there you don't want to you don't want to work until you're 70 70 to 75 years old i mean if that, some people can retire 50 60 or you know whatever that may be i mean not before 70 i mean how can you enjoy life if you're gonna retire on 70 you know if you can <laughs> You know what I mean, Ryan? Yeah. If, if we can die in five, ten years, like in, in five, five years, I'll be 50, you know, or another 10 years, I'll be 55. But I would rather retire 55 rather than 70, you know. So well, that's the thing. Like 
55 but compared to 70, that's 15 years. That's a lot of years. And a lot of people get in a situation and they're like, okay, well, I'm already, you know, X years old. I've only got this amount of years left. But like 15 years is a lot of years. Like that's a long time <laughs> to live. And so, yeah, even though you're not 20 or 18 and starting to invest, even though you're not going to be retired before you're 30 or something like that, any That's years right. that you save is going to be worth it. So I think people can learn a lot from your example. People can get inspired by this story. And uh, thank, thank you so much for your time. So that's Anytime. it from us today, guys. Until next time, stay positive. Okay, wow, what a great interview. Don't go away because there were some stuff after we recorded that Francis wanted to have added in that he forgot to say during the interview. So I'll play them just after this little recap I have I am so grateful for Francis. I'm so grateful that I was able to have a positive impact on his life, on his family's life. He's now got six properties plus his own home. He's in a positive cash flow situation. And he was saying that, you know, I'm really grateful that I found you and the first couple of per- properties I purchased were positive cash flow, which allowed me to grow my portfolio. So, Francis, thank you so much. You absolutely made my day hearing your story, hearing about your hard work, your dedication, and how it just took a little bit of an inspiration for you. And now you're off and running with it and achieving great success. And I, as well as I'm sure every on property listening to this, wish you the absolute best in your property journey. And we would love to have you back on in a year or two years uh, and see where you're at in terms of property investment. If you guys want to know more about the course or the membership site that Francis signed up for, that's called On Property Plus. It's now just over at On Property. So just go to onproperty.com.au forward slash membership and you can see there. I list new properties every single day. So I'll go out and I'll find properties with high rental yields that look like they're going to be positive cash flow. I'll share them with my members. I've also got courses in there on how to find positive cash flow property, how to do area research, whole bunch of stuff. Francis talked about um, in the back of the magazine, the stats, you know, we go through that and how to use all that sort of stuff so you can research an area. So there's also some tools in there to help you analyze cash flow. So really valuable stuff in there. You got properties, you got tools, you got courses. Uh, it's awesome stuff. Go to onproperty.com.au forward slash membership. And I would absolutely love to have you as a part of the community. I should have said in the video as well, uh, I just forget. Um, you, what really inspired me is when I drive to work or, or anywhere, I see some construction, pe- uh, you know, buildings or or units. Sometimes I think, how do they do it? You know, it has to be some way. And for me, that's my other motivation right now. You know, if they, if, if, if these people can do it, sorry about the noise, the helicopter coming in. Um, if these people can do it, I mean, probably we can. I mean, they're human beings as well, like us. Yeah. You know? so, I mean, actually, Ryan, to tell you, I should have mentioned, I just remember now, because um, a lot of things coming into my head. Actually, you inspired me as well, Ryan. Um, last April, last year, exactly last year, uh, I was looking at your webpage. I was, uh, I was listening to your talk. Uh, you did some video, and it really inspired me. Um, because those two properties, the positive cash flow that I bought through, uh, you know, when you advertise these properties and then looking around, um, it helped me put money in the pocket. So when I went for the loan for to get some capital, the bank just I was ex- I was expecting uh, I'm gonna be you know I'm gonna be rejected, but it didn't. So it worked. So so cash flow is king actually. Um, awesome. Yeah, I, well, I'm so glad that it could help you. Like, that's... You did. Seriously, uh, this is the first time I did a one on, uh, talk to you through through the through online, but you did you did help me and you did inspire me. I'm, and I remember you were showing a magazine with that data. Uh, yeah. Of which magazine you were showing. I should have... I just yeah, like remember. Australian Property Investor. I remember that video. Yeah. Thank you. And that helped me. That's one of my tools, actually. Yeah. Um, me looking at the data looking at the uh, the growth of that area and i actually fly uh, or, or yeah i fly to that place and look around that area i look at the shops you know the schools the hospital that's all growth you know so i should have mentioned that earlier sorry I just no no it's now. fine like <laughs> 
it's awesome. I'm just, it's so, it's so good for me to see someone doing like so well and that I've helped to inspire you along you your journey. You've run you with did. it and like, you know, you're achieving success and like your motivation is the same as mine. Like I want to be around there more for my kids. Like I quit like a six figure income job to like start my own business uh, and work for myself so I could be with my kids more. And so we have the yeah. same motivation. So it's great to see like a dad, like someone who's keen to spend time with their kids and stuff like that. So if anything I can help uh, for, for you or yeah, I would love to. Uh, I, look, I'm still learning. Um, I'm trying to build a portfolio. I'm not financially free yet, but it's something. I'm seeing results. Uh, well, that's it. The- I think people like seeing that more than someone who's already achieved it, you know, like the high-flying guys who own 300 properties or something like yeah. that. Like that's mm. so unachievable for everyone, whereas someone yeah. like yourself who's like bought their own house and now they're building their portfolio, like I get more inspired by that. I think other people will as well. So, oh, cool. oh thank you, thank you. Uh, yeah, but it's like uh, uh, sometimes it's hard. You know, it's not easy. Uh, but it's just like I stick. I have to stick to the plan because uh, I believe people fail because they try to do shortcuts. Um, I, again, I couldn't do it myself. Research. You helped me through your website. I ask people. Um, you know, I have good great accountant uh brokers and all that uh people who's been there done that getting advice from these people it's uh it's a great thing um i know i have to spend x amount of money to get where i am but i rather spend that investment rather than i lose hundreds and hundreds of thousands of dollars for 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 nothing so yeah totally yeah I'm happy to answer questions, though. Uh, I'll try my best to answer. If you have some questions from your from your viewers, um, I'm happy to answer them uh, as the best as I can. Look, I don't have all the answers I can, but I'm just answering from my experience. If someone can correct me from your viewers, I'm happy to take it. You know, I mean, I mean that's how we we're know. all trying to learn, aren't we? That's right. Okay, guys, that's it for today's episode. Francis did say that he was willing to answer questions. If any of you have questions, go to onproperty.com.au forward slash 363 because this is episode 363. Go over there, scroll to the bottom, and there's a comment section. You can leave in your comments, ask your questions in there, and I'll make sure that they get forwarded on to Francis and that he has a chance to answer them. So again, that's onproperty.com.au forward slash 363 if you want to ask some questions or if you want to get access to the membership site which I talked about before, go to onproperty.com.au forward slash membership. Thank you so much for watching, guys. I wish you the best in your property journey. And until next time, stay positive. Stay positive.